after the first week, we decided, hey, we got to have another band. <laughs> That's how young and inexperienced we were. We didn't even think about having another band. <laughs> we built a club, had a band, that was it. So we realized we had to get another band. We didn't have one. Somehow we found Percy Mayfield, who was the writer and arranger for Ray Charles and a star in his own right, and he came and played. Then the third week, we got Sonny Land Slim, the great piano player and the king of Chicago, and Big Walter Horton, who I call the prodigy, the uh, great harmonica player. Sonny Land became like something between your best friend, your grandfather, your godfather, and, and a total inspiration, much less a genius musician. He was one of the first of the guys in Chicago. He even knew Al Capone and stuff. He was so far back. And he was quite a gambler, too. I just couldn't forget. It until Sunnyland Slim played down there that it really took off. He went back to Chicago and told all those guys, here's a guy you can work with. Here's a guy you can play for. He respects what you do. He's not just some guy trying to make money. And that's how it all started. He told Muddy Waters and Muddy Waters told the world. Girl, no, she didn't put that thing on old man. Early one morning, girl, put that thing on me. Hey, now it ain't done nothing, y'all. Look out. Confusion of suckers home. 